Three factors affect ACL implementation. These factors are location, direction, and order. Let's discuss these factors in detail. Location. Access lists are applied to interfaces. For example, if a router has two interfaces, you can apply different access lists to both interfaces. An interface can only use its ACLs to filter the traffic that passes through it. It cannot use the ACLs of the other interface. If you apply an ACL to an interface that does not process targeted traffic, that ACL will not work. An ACL acts as a sieve. Just as a sieve uses its mesh to filter out liquid or small particles from a mixture, an ACL uses its statements to filter out the desired packets. A sieve can filter the mixture only when you pass the mixture through it. Similarly, an ACL can filter traffic only if traffic is processed through it. Let's take an example to understand how location affects ACL. In this network, three segments are connected through the router. Without any ACL, all segments can access each other. Now, the administrator wants to prevent the staff segment from accessing the server segment. For this, he created an ACL and applied it to the F0-1 interface. Will this ACL work? No, instead of blocking the staff segment, this ACL will block the administrator segment. The F0-1 interface connects the administrator segment to the server segment. To access the server segment, the traffic of the staff segment neither enters nor exits from the F0-1 interface. Since the traffic of the staff segment does not interact with the F0-1 interface, the ACL applied to the F0-1 interface does not affect it. When implementing an ACL on an interface, make sure that the interface interacts with the targeted traffic. If the targeted traffic does not pass through it, the ACL will not work. Direction. When a router receives a packet on its interface, it reads the destination address of the packet and forwards the packet from the interface that is connected to the destination address. We can divide this process into three phases. These phases are entry, process, and exit. In the first phase, the packet enters the router. In the second phase, the router processes the packet. In the third phase, the packet exits the router. We can apply an ACL before the first phase and the third phase. We can't apply an ACL before and after the second phase. If we apply the ACL before the first phase, the router will process the incoming packets through the ACL. If we apply the ACL before the third phase, the router will process the outgoing packets through the ACL. Inbound and outbound ACLs. If you use an ACL to filter incoming traffic, it is called an inbound ACL. If you use an ACL to filter outgoing traffic, it is called an outbound ACL. An inbound ACL cannot filter the outgoing traffic whereas an outbound ACL cannot filter the incoming traffic. Let's take our example back to understand the effect of the direction on the ACL. To prevent the staff segment from accessing the server segment, the administrator applied the outbound ACL to the F0-0 interface. Although the administrator has applied the ACL to the F0-0 interface, yet the staff segment can access the server. Can you guess what's wrong with this implementation? The F0-0 interface is the default gateway of the staff segment. It receives traffic from the staff segment and forwards it to the server segment. The F0-0 interface is the entry point of traffic. The administrator applied the outbound ACL to filter the incoming traffic. The traffic of the staff segment enters the F0-0 interface. It does not exit the F0-0 interface. An outbound ACL can't filter the incoming traffic. To filter incoming traffic, the administrator has to apply an inbound ACL to the F0-0 interface. Once an inbound ACL is implemented, the interface will filter each incoming packet through it. The interface will permit only the authorized packets. Order. Once the access list is implemented, the router processes each packet through the access list. For each packet, the router checks each entry in the access list from top to bottom until a match is found. Once a match is found, the router executes the corresponding action. It does not check the remaining entries for that packet. If an access list has multiple entries for the same packet, the router will only execute the action of the first entry from the top. For example, if you apply the following ACL on a router, the router will never stop a white car, even if there is an entry in the ACL that blocks the white car. If you want to allow only some hosts from a network, you should add the allow statements first in the ACL. If you add an allow statement below the deny statement of the same criteria, the allow statement will never execute. Let's understand it through our example. The administrator wants to allow only the host 10.0.0.10-8 from the 10.0.0.0-8 network to access the server segment. 
For this, he created an ACL and applied it to the F0-0 interface in the inbound direction. Afterward, all traffic from the staff section has blocked. Even the host 10.0.0.10-8 has an allowed entry, still the host can't access the server segment. Can you guess why this ACL is not working? When the packets from the host 10.0.0.10 enter the F0-0 interface, the interface checks the applied ACL. The first statement of the ACL says deny all incoming traffic. Since this criterion matches all incoming packets, the interface never checks the next statement for any incoming packet. It always executes the action of the first statement. Since the action of the first statement is the deny all, all incoming packets are denied. To fix this issue, the administrator needs to put the allow statement before the deny statement. The correct ACL is the following. Allow 10.0.0.10-8 deny all. Now, when packets from the host 10.0.0.10-8 enter the F0-0 interface, the interface will allow them. But if it receives packets from other hosts, it will discard them. Let's understand why this will happen. When a packet enters the interface, the interface checks the ACL. The first statement of the ACL is for the host 10.0.0.10-8. The interface will check the source address of the packet. If the source address of the packet is 10.0.0.10-8, the interface will execute the action of the first statement. The action of the first statement is allow. Because of this, the packet will be allowed. If the source address of the packet is not 10.0.0.10-8, the interface will check the next statement. The next statement is deny all. This will match all incoming packets. The action of the second statement is deny all. Because of this, the packet will be discarded. Thus, apart from the packets of the host 10.0.0.10-8, all incoming packets will be discarded. That's all for this video. This video is the second video of the video tutorial series Cisco Access Lists explained with examples. In this video, we discussed how location, direction and order affect an ACL. In the next video, we will discuss how ACL works. Thanks for watching this video.